Hi, I'm David Beach, and this is Elevate Your Performance. Last week, I introduced the birth of the quality movement, which followed W. Edwards Deming's series of lectures with the Japanese Union of Scientists and Engineers in 1950. But today, I want to tease out a few more details about Deming. Uh, and I also want to make a controversial point that PDCA is not an effective problem solving methodology. I mean, it's great for product development and for continuous improvement stuff, it's perfect but it's just not specifically for everyday problem solving. And I'll tell you why. Now on dimming, I don't claim to be a dimming expert. My friend, Mark Graben has far greater understanding of dimming and his key contributions. But much of what I will share today uh, came from an article published in Quality Progress back in November of 2010 by uh, Ronald Moen and Clifford Norman. Fascinating article, I'll paste the link in the description box. Now I have to start the Deming story with Walter Schuhart. Schuhart earned his doctorate in physics from Berkeley in 1917 and joined Western Electric's inspection engineering department at the Hawthorne Works back in 1918. Now you can learn a little bit more about AT&T, Bell Labs, and Western Electric in my video episodes 134 and 135. Deming earned his doctorate in mathematical physics from Yale in 1928, and that's around the time when he discovered Schuhart's work and wanted to apply his statistical quality control principles to non-manufacturing processes. Apparently, they built a pretty close relationship, and in 1939, Deming served as editor of Schuhart's book, Statistical Method for Viewpoint, from the Viewpoint of Quality Control. This is where the Schuhart cycle first appeared, thanks to Deming. This three-step cycle consisted of specification, production, and inspection. But what made it different was that Schuhart insisted that this was circular and not linear, like most processes that people described in the days. Now, as Deming continued to evolve Schuhart's work for non-manufacturing processes, he joined the U.S. Census Bureau and applied his theories there. Deming refined the four-step cycle, or his refined four-step cycle included design, produce, sell, get to market, and redesign through market research. Now he made this modification in Japan at 1950 at a meeting of Japanese Union of Scientists and Engineers, or JUICE. And it was JUICE who relabeled the steps to, as plan, do, check, act, and published them widely through Japan. Now I don't know if this was a lost in translation thing or an effort by JUICE just to simplify the language, but Deming called this the corruption. Now, Deming eventually warmed to the idea, but insisted that check was just insufficient for a learning cycle and focused instead on study, giving us the PDSA cycle. Now, Toyota still uses PDCA for their main thinking process and to drive continuous improvement. For problem solving, they built their seven step or eight step, depending on who you ask, problem solving process around the PDCA, PDCA cycle, but added more descriptions. Now I taught PDCA for years and everyone always struggled with the plan part. That's mainly why I think PDCA is a launch cycle or an improvement cycle and not necessarily a problem solving cycle to tackle everyday problems. So with lots of help, I created the C4 process to focus directly on problem solving with four key steps. Concern, where you focus on finding, understanding, defining and breaking down a problem, cause, where you find those root causes, countermeasure, where you take action to correct the problem at its root cause, and confirm, where you study the result, learn and celebrate. Here's what I want you to be thinking about though. Now Japan initiated their quality focus in the 1950s. I grew up in the 60s and Japanese products then were cheap crap. In the 70s, Japanese products were cheap, but they weren't really crap anymore, particularly with electronics. And then by the mid 80s, both US electronics and automobile manufacturers were collapsing under the onslaught of high quality, affordable Japanese products. Now, thanks to an old NBC News documentary called If Japan Can, Why Can't We? America rediscovered Deming and launched its own quality revolution in the 80s. The quality movement in Japan took 30 years to actually shake the market. That was a generational change. Lean is also a generational change. It will not succeed if we decide to focus on implementation of our favorite parts and ignore the rest. It also won't succeed if we change initiatives with every new leader. Next up, I have a few more stories about Deming, Duran, and the quality circles movement in the 60s in Japan. 
one of my favorite stories about quality circles. So be sure to subscribe, like, and comment, and share. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.